No, you must be so hungry, huh? Just, just do it. Just do it. No, she She doesn't know. She doesn't be, know. She's not even looking. Be slow. Ready? I'm scared. Oh, she's really liking it. I don't know about you, I promise. Okay. I pinky promise. Oh, she's like, why'd you guys stop? She's nice, kiddo. Didn't she let all of us do it today? If you can pet her, we all did it today. Let's be brave on the count of three. Ready? One, two, two, three. Or by the time I count to ten, you will have done it. And I won't look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Good job. You were so brave. So brave. <laughs> hey guys, we are back with the Morgan series after a two week break while Dave and I were on the Disney cruise. Um, Morgan pretty much had two weeks off of training because Patty got super busy with work. She said that she took Morgan out a couple times, but um, Morgan was only interested in doing short flights. She was still kind of really affected by the hormonal season and was just super cuddly and that was pretty much it. So when I brought Morgan out, I pretty much experienced the same thing that Patty had talked about. I got a few longer flights out of her, but it was a lot of waiting and I was having to use a reset and it just kind of felt like pulling teeth, to be honest. So she was definitely cuddly and showing more of the hormonal stuff that Patty was referring to. So yes, accurate. Um, I tried to be like a moving target so that she would have to adjust her flight pattern and, and really think on the fly, so to speak. And she just, she was not interested in that. So I would like pace back and forth. And as soon as I would stop is when she would fly. And uh, so she wasn't up for the challenge and <laughs> Yeah, the one good thing that I did get from her was a contact call. And what a contact call is, is to non-bird people, it would just sound like a bird is screaming. But there's a big difference between just obnoxious screaming for attention and a contact call. A contact call is what I would refer to as a Marco Polo. So this is what we use to teach hide and seek. And it's basically, if you guys aren't familiar with the game Marco Polo, it's actually a pool game that I grew up playing where one person would be in the water with their eyes closed and they would say Marco and all the other people would say Polo and they would try to find them just off of hearing them and they wouldn't be able to open their eyes or anything. So how we play Marco Polo with the birds is we use contact calls. So when the bird calls us and makes this screaming noise, which is very distinct from annoying attention screaming, um, we normally call back. And this is so that when a bird is flying outside and it gets stuck in a location where it's not sure how to come down or it can't see you and it's a little bit nervous, it contact calls for you, you contact call back, and it finds its way to you through that contact call. So I'm gonna play hide and seek with Bandit. You can see him through the trees, he's with Dave. So I'm gonna call him and see if he can find me. Bandit! Bandit boy! Oh, <laughs> there he is. Good boy. He is a master hide and seek player. So it's a really good thing, even though this is a mediocre contact call, that I got one out of Morgan by doing the reset. This is a really, really good thing um, for outdoor flight. You want your bird to communicate with you and talk to you about where it is. Our birds do this in flight, so they'll be going and you hear them contact calling even from the air. So um, a lot of times if you see videos of people free flying their birds, you'll notice that they're calling to them and they're just saying like, yeah, good bird, yeah, good, and hey, and, or they'll say the name, they'll just be like, yeah, Jinxie, or whatever. And that's just contact calling. It's Marco Polo, Marco Polo. Good bird! Good bird! It's just a way of communicating with a bird. So it's a really good sign if your bird does that. Knowing the difference is knowing whether or not you're training a contact call or you're training screaming. So it's um, 
very distinct and important to know the difference, but I was excited. And that was pretty much the only progress I made because Morgan's lazy bum. I'm back home with Morgan. Morgan Jordan. Hi, girl. Hi, girl. Do you wanna fly? Did you fly for two weeks? Did you do anything? Were you a lazy bum? What happened? How was your two weeks? How was your two weeks? How was your two weeks? Let's see if you wanna fly, okay? I'm gonna show you guys some conditioning of touch real quick, because we've progressed on this a lot. So what you would do, can't get your head in there. You do this, and treat. Or you can also give the treat at the same time that you're petting. So there's, it's an incompatible behavior. They can't bite you um, while they're eating. So pet and treat at the same time, you can do that. Just more on touch conditioning since she's gotten so much better. Remember when I used to ask her if I could pet her from like a foot away and she'd be like, no. Okay, Good job, girly. Good girl. Good girl. Good. You pick. Okay. <laughs> Good job, girl. Last one, and we're going to do a wave. Wave. Yeah. Good job. Good job.